afternoon again. Um, this 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 video is uh, carrying on from where Ronald Koeman got sacked off at uh, sacked at Everton. Is now he's been in, in temporary charges. Is David Unsworth, the um, ex Everton player, and he uh, obviously is the youth coach for the under twenty. I think it's under twenty threes um, at, at, at Goodison Park. And he's been quite successful in the, in the youth capacity. However, what I've seen from fans on online, and this this is frustrated fans, by the way. This is not people in the know. These are frustrated fans and their views, and we have to listen to that because if they, if Ken Wright, Bill Ken Wright, doesn't listen to the fans when he appoints the manager, and he appoints the wrong person, and the atmosphere doesn't change, they don't want him permanently in the role. They don't. I think they'll be happy with him in the League Cup tie because they've got to get obviously have someone in charge for the League Cup tie on Wednesday against Chelsea. That's first. And then obviously you've got the um the league game on the weekend. Now so far this season they they they, they the season started brightly for the first couple of games and it's obviously gotten to pot and the, the players have come out and stated that Ronald Kaiman was a very negative that's in the past now. David Un David Unsworth is a is a club man. He is. Um, so it, it is vital that he is given the backing for tomorrow. And if results do pick up and, and the and the culture changes and the players buy in, then obviously he is the right man for the job. At least in the short term. Because bearing in mind you've got the you've got two months till the January transfer window opens. And if you've got a squad that ain't gelling, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And you could lose too much traction. Uh, Stoker, to be fair, Stoker in the same boat, except they haven't sat their manager. They're just above you on goal difference. That is it. Bournemouth are, are playing well, even if the results haven't gone their way. But they are literally just, just behind you. And there are other teams just above as well. It's all very congested in that 19th to... Eighth, I would say, very very congested. There's very few points. You can one or two wins, and you are in the top half of the table. You're in the verge of the top eight. So you don't want to get separated from that group. You really don't. Another thing. Um, so the fans have been very vocal about not wanting him. They definitely don't want David Moyes to come back. You've got to look at the managers that are available, and the fact that Leicester also at the moment have Appleton in temporary charge. You've got to look at the managers that are available. Ryan Giggs and Paul Scholes have been floated around this conversation. And they're young and they're British and they've only recently retired from playing. And they still are involved in football with the fact that they over or have coached or got their coaching badges and they they've helped set up football clubs where they are still involved in football in some capacity so they're very knowledgeable they have been banned around for various management positions now Giggs has actually tried his hand for a little bit as a caretaker at Man United for I think six seven games something like that and he was reasonable we did reasonable considering that the season was basically done and they just needed someone to fill the gap until the new manager came in is he the right man for the is he the right fit for the job um, he knows the North West. He's played at Man United for his entire career, won many trophies. Um, he knows how fans perceive things. He knows that youth needs to be given a chance. Um, he, he came through youth ranks and then stayed his entire career at one club, similar to David Unsworth. So, would he be a fit? Either way, Leicester are also looking for a full time management position as well. And Pellegrini's on that list, Ranieri's on that list, um, Sean Dyche from Burnley, either both clubs apparently are looking at him and he's denied these rumours and it's all rumour mill and this doesn't help his club going forward either. Because if they lose their manager they could lose their impetus and stuff because he's doing a good job there. Um, so there's a lot going on. David, Un David Unsworth's in charge for now, he's done really well with the youth setup at Everton, uh, I think a lot of... Everton fans may, may, may forget that. Um, I'm not saying that they're wrong in their argument that they don't want him. They, they want a fresh face. But he has been around the club for a long time and he was club captain. He's been had two spells at the club. Phil Neville's been mentioned as well as a possible managerial candidate. 
So, another ex-club captain played many seasons at the club after leaving Man United. So, there's a lot of talk of ex-players and bringing them in. But not every ex-player makes a, a damn good manager. I'm going to say that. Not all ex-players make good managers. I'm just putting that out there. Word of warning. Um, but I, I do think that Kaiman, I think... Even though I hate the amount of managerial sackings that take place, I do think Kaiman, with his attitude that what what's come out about his his regime, I we'll call it a regime, were very negative. Whereas Craig Shakespeare, the players were very positive about him, and they were very upset and saddened when he was let go. There's the difference. The players weren't crying over spilled milk in this case, Leicester's case. They wanted to keep faith with the manager, and I think they probably should have at Leicester. However. That aside, both these clubs are now looking for full-time managers. Both have now got caretakers in charge who were already at the club beforehand in various capacities, be it assistants or youth coaches. Maybe Unsworth should be given till the rest of the season. We don't know. Maybe he should be given a couple of weeks. Let's see what happens. Give give the guy at least a chance. He's he's won the, the, the youth level Premier League a couple of times. He's doing he does he's done quite well with the, the kids at Everton. Give him a chance. Um, I'm just going to put this out there about Everton. You're not Premier League winning material and you're a long way from it. The players you brought in haven't quite gelled yet. Um, you've got two months, to, you're stuck for two months with this squad uh, of players that you got. You're stuck with it for another two months. You can make no changes. Um, so, is the second come at the wrong time? Possibly. Um, but at the same time when Kaiman first came along the attitude of the players was completely different and you could see they were buying into what he was doing So something there's obviously an incident that's happened where his mindset's changed and the players' mindset's changed but this is the second time that Everton players have basic down tools for the, for the manager in charge look what happened to Martinez they basically refused to buy into his system and they so at the same time the players have to take some responsibility for what has unfolded at that club the players have basically refused to play properly and refused to buy in initially um, and have down tools and made life very difficult for the manager and again this is what fans are saying on Twitter and what responses to videos that I've seen uh, people have responded to my videos going thank god Coleman's gone um, and I've made references to the fact that I was less surprised than other sackings that have occurred it's been my most popular video so far um, followed by Mark Sampson getting sacked from the women's team so that goes to show how invested a lot of people are still in football in this country I, I personally am tuning off football but I pick up on these stories and this is one of the reasons why I'm getting frustrated with football the players are overpaid there is far too much money and managers aren't given a hope in hell to build a squad, build a build a philosophy, and and and, and go forward and develop the players. So, players that shouldn't be paid as much as they are are getting overpaid across the board. All, I think all football players are paid far too much. It's obscene amounts of money. Ticket prices are un, unsustainable. The TV sharing rights are are a joke because they could let us in for free, and yet the big. The big six, I'm going to use that in inverted comments, the big six clubs, because they want to be even greedier. Um, you've got clubs under investigation for tax fraud. <coughs> Newcastle, sorry, sorry about that. Um, the fit of a person's test is failing. Um, financial fair fair play is a joke, because it's not enforced. Uh, if Huddersfield are forced to shut down their academy because they can't recruit the youth because the big teams have the financial clout to nick them, yet the Women's Super League from next year you've got to have an academy to be allowed in. Two tier system, very strict for women, no help for them. This, the FA's got problems. And then we get to the managerial sackings. We've had three Premier League sackings this season, and it's basically where players have down, well, two of them is down to players downing tools and basically going on an unpaid strike. De Burr at Palace players clearly did not even bother to try and work with him. They just were crap. Overpaid. Everton. Now, it could be the culture the managers brought in. 
there was obviously a personality clash. You still should try and be as professional as possible. You're paid obscene amounts of money. You earn in a week what I would earn in five, ten years, if I'm lucky. That is how sick it is, for me, personally. So there you go. But Unsworth's in charge on a temporary basis. I can see a lot of Everton fans being not happy with this. And I understand they want complete overhaul and change and, and the right guy in. But if he does a good job and you get out the best you're in, even if it's just two places higher than where you are now and you survive in the Premier League and you can build for next season, he's done a good job. If he can get those players at least playing with some energy and some pride, he's done a good job. Um, don't read a book by its cover with him. I think you've got to give him time. And if they say, right, you've got a couple of games as a caretaker, well, we sort out a contract for a replacement for Cayman. Then, you know, that's what the club have got to do. Um, he might only get like two or three games in charge, and then he might win all three. He might lose all three. We don't know. But until he's given a chance to work with the first team squad, we ain't going to know. He's only literally got a few days with the first team squad before this cup game tomorrow. He's had, a, I think, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will have maybe one training session with the group. And he won't necessarily know everyone in the group that he used to play with because he hasn't played for a while. A lot of faces have changed. That's another problem with Everton. They haven't had a good call. I don't know what's happened to Leon Osman, if he's retired or not, because he seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. And Tony Hibbert's disappeared off the face of the earth. These were core players that were with the club their entire careers and they, they seem to have vanished. And, and, and as such anyway we'll leave that there please like and subscribe please comment below leave your views and i'll have another video for you in soon